welcome to Bicycle Touring Talk. I am George Schlakek, and this is episode 142. Recent videos are all about the Colombia tour Barbara and I did in 2019. In the last one, we spent a few days on the road, and then on February 12th, we reached the town of Puerto Berrio in sweltering heat. Finding the right hotel here was either purely by luck or just abundance of very affordable quality places really quick. We ended up in a nice large room right in the center of town. It was on the first floor and larger than we had been used to on the road. This is what it looks like. Well. You have to wash your clothes in the hotel room. And you have to park your bikes in the room too. Which is kind of good because they're right here and the room is large. We had paid for two nights right away. And the only thing we knew for sure was that we were going to leave this place on the 14th. Our return flight to Canada was booked for the 21st and we were still far away from Bogota. It was well over 300 kilometers, which is doable by bike. However, the terrain that was ahead of us was going to be very challenging. Bogota is at an altitude of 2,600 and something meters or 8,660 feet above sea level. Puerto Berrio, just 123 meters or 404 feet. The terrain wasn't the only problem with doing this ride in about a week. Traffic on Colombian highways, especially in the mountainous regions, was brutal. There didn't seem to be any rules or enforcement of such, as we had seen on our way through the mountains a month earlier. It could be very, very dangerous for us. Another danger of a different nature were the unstable cliffs that were at the side of the road. Huge falling rocks were always a possibility. As you may have seen in my earlier episodes of this trip, we were not the fastest when it came to climbing hills. Often, I had to help Barbara push her bike when the grades became too steep. Even for me, climbing with 50 plus pounds of luggage on the bike was very slow and tough. We had agreed to stop somewhere before we hit the mountains and ride a bus back into Bogota. That, of course, bought us some time, in a way but we weren't exactly familiar with the bus connections from rural areas, especially when it came to traveling with our bikes. On the morning of the 13th, while exploring Puerto Berrio, we made the decision to stop our bicycle touring across the country and take advantage of the bus connections from this place. We were about 180 kilometers away from Medellin, and it was supposedly a three and a half or so hour bus ride to get there. It would have been impossible for us to visit that city by bicycle alone. The bus was cheap and it made perfect sense. We went to the terminal and bought two tickets to Medellin for the next day on the Rapido Ochoa, the fast wolf. <laughs> For the rest of that day, we really enjoyed Puerto Berrio. A city of about 45,000 is at the shore of the Magdalena River, and in my opinion, a great place to visit, while it doesn't compare with the big cities like Bogota and Medellin. People are more authentic here, as there are generally fewer tourists. The town is and has been a transportation hub throughout its history due to the perfect location on the river and the former rail connections. Unfortunately, the railway has been shut down for many years after it had been nationalized in the early 1960s and traffic had been declining due to political instability. There have been plans to rebuild it, but it seems like it hasn't happened yet. Enjoy my little slideshow of Puerto Berrio. This is what small town Colombia looks like. It's easy to fall in love with.
On the 14th, we took the Fast Wolf bus. <laughs> the only pictures I have of this ride show us in our seats. This was a much smaller bus than the ones that circulate between the bigger cities. When we had bought the tickets, we had been told that this was a big bus. <laughs> but it probably didn't make sense for this company to run a really big bus between Medellin and this smaller town twice daily for just a few people. Our departure was in the afternoon. It was a ride from hell. I usually don't get motion sickness, but on this ride, <laughs> I nearly puked. What's more, the bus didn't have a huge luggage compartment. The only one that fit our bikes was in the back, and the bus driver wasn't exactly helpful when it came to loading them, or even giving directions as to how to best stow them in there. I had to do it all by myself. The latch on that big hatch? <laughs> it seemed okay, but there was doubt. So besides motion sickness, I had an image of the bikes falling onto the highway or another vehicle behind us. On my mind pretty much the entire way. No. The way to Medellin was curvy. We passed a few smaller villages and some of the turns were so tight that the bus had to back up to let an oncoming truck pass. But those were actually moments of relief because the bus wasn't flying around hairpin curves at breakneck speed. Imagine over three hours of this. Then we finally arrived in Medellin. We had already found several hotels near the bus station on the Google map the night before. <laughs> but as it turned out, there was more than one bus station and um, we were at the wrong one. That wasn't immediately obvious though, so we got confused and ended up in an industrial area. After spending considerable time trying to find our way around, we finally ended up in an area that was populated with people and businesses, including a few hotels. We were relieved when we saw one that looked similar to the places we had usually picked in small towns. Even the price was right. The room was on the first floor and quite small. It looked clean and all. The only drawback was that it didn't have a window. Who cares, we thought. It was only for a few nights, right? So I hauled our bikes up there and we got settled in. We took our showers and an hour or so later we were out in the now dark streets hunting for a meal. There was a fantastic outdoor food stand on the sidewalk nearby. I was still feeling the after effects of the bus ride in my stomach, but I was also very hungry. They had those amazing empanadas, but was it going to be okay eating this fried stuff now? Well, it turned out that it was exactly what I needed. Not only did it make me forget about the ride from hell, but it must have had some magic stomach soothing ingredients. Even though we hadn't cycled a whole lot that day, we slept like babies. Well, I did. The next morning, Barbara filled me in on what type of hotel we had landed in. According to her, there had been lots of activities in the hallways that night. People were going in and out all hours of the night. <laughs> Moaning too? Oh well. At least we had a clean room. I'll tell you in the next episode how the story goes on. I can tell you that Medellin was an adventure. I hope you enjoyed the story and if you're wondering about the rest of the tour, well, there's an entire playlist dedicated to it. Subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and of course, support me in more ways if you like. There are some suggestions for this in the description below, of course. See you next time.